much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to Pointless, the game where you'll be rewarded for knowing the obscure rather than the obvious. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. My name's Brian, and this is Ashley, and we are from Plymouth. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Richard, this is my partner, Kate, and we are from Colchester in Essex. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Jude, this is my daughter, Casey, and we're from Stockport. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Jenny, this is my fiancé, Will, and we're from Cheshire. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. A very warm welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have you here. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. If he decided to collect his thoughts, he'd need an aircraft hangar to keep them in. My Pointless friend is Richard. Hiya. Uh... Hey, everybody. Hey there. Hey. How are I'm, you? I'm very well, thank nice you. Nice to have three returning yeah. pairs, isn't yeah. it? How lovely to have you all back. Lovely to see you all. Um, Kate and Richard knocked out in round one. Richard let himself down, I think. But it's a, it was an aberration, yeah. I think. I think it was an aberration. I think we'll see right. a lot more of them. Right. Um, Jenny and Will, welcome back. Knocked out in round two. They got through round one with two points, which is pretty good right. going. And Jude and Casey threw to the head-to-head. -head. So lovely to have you back as well. Now, they were beaten by Alison Joshua. Mm. £6,000 up for grabs. Now, they chose a category which took us all by surprise, I would yeah. say, which is they went yeah. for 1958. And we're thinking, surely that's a little bit before their time. But then what happened? Unbelievable. 1958 comes up and they punted it into the long grass. So, yeah, didn't win the jackpot <laughs> at all. So we're adding another £1,000 to that. And that means today's jackpot starts off at £7,000. Yes, that's what you've walked into. Right, so if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. Now, remember, it's always the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated, so you just have to keep your scores low and it'll all be great. Uh, best of luck to everybody. Our first category this afternoon is... Nature. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Trees. Richard. Quite often our, uh, our things up there are quite descriptive, aren't they? But this mm. time, no. Absolutely no mucking about. Nature, trees. Mm. Yeah, we're going to show seven descriptions now of trees, but which trees are we describing? Be wow. seven on the first ball, seven on the second. A veritable forest of 14 trees 14 uh, to get at home. Trees. A copse, but it's not really a forest, is it? 14 trees. Wow. A little arboretum. Yeah. yeah. A little kind go. of back garden, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. OK, well, let's put our first board of trees up on the board. And here they are. In 1965, a new Canadian flag was inaugurated featuring a stylized representation of the leaf of this tree. It begins with M. Plant with heart-shaped leaves, it shares its name with a type of tangy green citrus fruit, L. Deciduous tree, it produces fruit with varieties such as conference and doyenne de commis, P. Poplar species, which shares its name with a Colorado ski resort, A. Once thought to protect against witches, it shares its name with a comic actor who plays Mr Bean, R. Sherwood Forest has a famous example of this tree. Legend says it sheltered Robin Hood and his merry men. Oh, and a fruit tree which blossoms during the season of Sakura, celebrated in Japan. C. There we are. Now then, Ashley, welcome to Point. It's good to have you, you here. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, I am, at the moment, I'm a portfolio manager for a lettings company. Um, but in a previous life, I was a, a performer and a singer. Do you miss the performing and I the singing, do. Ashley? I do. It's been do, a while. do the people you're showing around, showing lettings to, do they ever get taken by surprise when you suddenly trill? And in here! <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised, yeah, quite often. Ah, oh. Ashley, this board is all yours. Look at that. Pristine board. Where are you going to go? Um, OK, there's a couple that I definitely know. There's one that I would take a risk on, but if it's our first time here, I don't want to get it wrong. So I think I'm going to go for the uh, one with the actor who plays Mr Bean and yeah. go for Rowan. Rowan, the Rowan tree. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Rowan. Well, Rowan is right. Uh, it's quite a high one, but it's OK. 70, not bad at all. Really. Good stuff. Yeah, Romans are often planted near um, houses because uh, postmen are allergic to them. 
Of course they are. Yeah. Yes. yes. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Kate. Kate, welcome Hello. back. Hello. Tell us something we didn't know about you. Um, so, currently, I am training to become a volunteer for the Samaritans. Had that been something you'd been thinking of doing for yeah, a while? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's quite a brave step to yeah, take, Yeah, I just thought it? my kids have got older now and yeah. I thought I've got a bit more time on my hands and yeah. so I thought I'd try that. Do you yeah. have a background in counselling at all? Or is it... No, no. No. <laughs> no. no. Good, good for you. That's <laughs> absolutely you. fantastic. Now, Kate, what are you going to go for on this board? Um, I think I'm going to go for the third one and try pair. There we are, pair, conference. That was the one that, for me, gave it away. <laughs> Let's see, uh, how many of our 100 people said pair? Pair is right. 70 is the only score we have at the moment, and you pass that down, you go to 54. Uh, well done, you're a pear tree not native to the UK at all. It was introduced about 1,000 years ago, around about the year 1,000. That's interesting. It doesn't sound like a real year, does it? Doesn't it really, is. no. Yeah. Around the year 1,000. Where did it come from? The pear tree? Yeah. Abroad. <gasps> of course it would. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Casey. Hi. Casey, welcome back. Thank you. Tell us more about Casey. Um, well, as I've mentioned previously, I'm an ODP. Yes, exactly. Operating department Oper practitioner. De operating... Department practitioner. Department practitioner. Yes. That's right, operating um, department practitioner. Working in theatres, yeah. Mainly working orthopedic yeah, yeah, yeah. surgery. Don't fall into the trap <laughs> I fell into. She means operating theatres. There you go. There uh, we go. Yeah, mainly orthopedic surgery. That's exciting. What do you wear in the... Just scrubs, yes. same normal scrubs. J-cloth hat. Um, if I'm scrubbed for a case, I'll then have to wear an operating gown, two pair of gloves, mask, visor. I hope the temperature in the, in the theatre is clement. Well, no, it has to be quite low in orthopaedic surgery. Oh, that's surgery. good. That's yep. good. You don't want to be getting hot and all that. Well, you do, because you're under operating lights. Oh. Oh, it swings like, and round. Where do you go with that? Where do we go? Very where sweaty. do we go? <laughs> Well, we'll revisit this, I'm sure. I'll have forgotten everything you've told me as well by the next will. time, of course. Um, Casey, what would you like to go for? Um, I feel that every answer is going to be really obvious. Um, I will go for the bottom one and say cherry. Cherry, says Casey. Let's see how many of our 100 people said cherry. It is cherry. 70 is our high score, 54 our low, and you pass them both. Down you go to 47. Very well done. This is all moving in the right direction. Yeah, well done. Uh, Sakura actually means cherry blossom in Japanese. Yeah, they all feel like they're going to score a lot of points, don't they? And thus far, yeah. yes, one of those boards where it doesn't feel like there's a obvious low answer. No. Um, Jenny, welcome back. Good to have you here again. Back on the same podium, slightly confusingly. Um, tell us more about yourself, Jenny. So, I mentioned last time I love singing. Um, I actually released a single in 2019. What would you call yourself as an artist? So, I was called Tyson Berry, which is my surname. How did it do, the single? What happened? Well, it was a bit of fun, really. I was doing a karaoke competition on a cruise and there happened to be a producer on board as well and he said, do you want to just get together? And we wrote it together. Um, on the cruise? No, so said... we, we did it after and we did it via, like, um, YouTube and different things, yeah. What a nice thing to have in your back pocket, yeah. isn't it? Uh, Jenny, you're the last person to have this board. Do you want to talk us through all the trees? Um, I will try. So, I think the top one is maple and then lime. I'm not too sure of the other two. I could guess that maybe O is oak, but I wouldn't want to guess. So I'm going to go for lime for the second lime, one. Lime, the lime tree. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for lime. Lime is right. 47 is our low score. You end up on 55. Not bad. Well, but yeah, completely different to lime trees that grow limes. They just happen Indeed. to have the same name. Um, now, let's fill in the rest of these, shall we? Maple is actually the biggest scorer of all. Would have scored you 82. You're quite right about Oak, but a fairly big scorer, as you might expect. Would have scored 66. This is the lowest score. It's not a particularly low score. But Aspen. Aspen is the answer, and would have scored you 32. Well done if you said that one. Thank you very much indeed. OK, well, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. 47, Casey, well done. The best score of the pass. Then up from there, 54, where we find uh, Kate and Richard. Then 55, where we find Jenny and Will. Then up to 70, Ashley and Brian. So, Brian, I mean, you know, it's all pretty much of a muchness-ish. You are a bit ahead, so nice low score from you. We'll sort that out. Uh, good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? Let's put seven more trees uh, described by these clues up on the board, and here they are. We've got the General Sherman, 
found in the California National Park is a famous example of this type of large tree, G.S. The name of this tree, noted for its small female catkins, is also used for a light brown eye colour, H. Named for Ilex aquifolium, the prickly plant paired with ivy in the title of a popular Christmas carol, H. Tree that shares its name with a group who had a 1995 UK hit single entitled Girl from Mars, A. Similar in appearance to the sycamore, this hybrid is a common tree in the UK capital, LP. Woolsthorpe Manor is home to a noted fruit tree of this type, associated with Isaac Newton, A. And West Bromwich Albion's home ground, opened in 1900, takes its name from this tree, also known as the May tree, H. Um, Will, Hello. you're on 55. What we're looking for is a score of 14 or less. Tell us a bit more about yourself, though, Will. So, um, I'm quite a foodie. I enjoy baking, watching loads of cooking programmes, um, drinking as well, wine, bit of a craft beer geek as well. Um, are you? Yeah, quite into Do that. you, I mean, are you so crafty that you, you get all your own ingredients, or do you buy them in a kit? So, yeah, I'm not a home brewer, so I just like to spend lots of time looking at beer online and Oh, is he looking at beer? Shops. Oh, I, yeah. I won't And drink then drinking. It. No, <laughs> and drink it a little bit. Yeah. What, what kind of beer do you favour? Um, I like stouts, um, IPAs. Stout. Yeah. So any, any beer that you generally can't see. If yeah. it's translucent, you won't really touch it. <laughs> Thick as treacle. Absolutely. Um, OK, uh, now, 55 is your score, as I say. What are you going to go for? Lovely, yeah, so clean ball. I wasn't there. too confident until the last one, but I'm quite a fan of football, um, and I think it'll be a relatively low score if it's right, so I'm hoping it's Hawthorne. Hawthorne says, Will, let's see how many of our 100 said Hawthorne. Here's your red line. It is indeed Hawthorne. It's a good score, Will. Look at that. Down it goes to 27. In fact, it is our lowest score of the round so far, and that takes your total up to 82. Well played, Will, and simply named after the fact that Hawthorne trees used to grow on that land. Can't say fairer than that. You can't. No, thank you very much indeed. Now then, Jude. Welcome back. Thank you. Tell us more about yourself, Jude. Uh, well, you know, I'm retired. I live in Stockport, very proud grandparents to... Now, three. How, um, many, how many grandchildren? Three, one of each. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> who are they? Will you tell us their names? Uh, Gabriel, Gabriel, Spencer. Spencer. Who's, who's a girl? Who's a girl? Spencer. And Gil. And Gil? Yes. Gabriel, Spencer and Gil. That sounds like the first went for a walk up a hill. <laughs> um, how lovely. Now, uh, 47 is your score at the moment, so 34 or less is your target. OK, I'm going to go for the fourth one the tree that shares its name with a group who had a 19... Well, and all that. Ash. Ash. There we are. Here is your red line. Can you get below that with ash? Ash is right. I think you're going to do this, Jude, and you do. Look at that. Down it goes to 26. That's perfect. A new low score of the round, in fact. 73 is your total. It's a lovely answer. Well done. Lovely to have Ash mentioned on the show as well. Great Isn't band. it? Thank you very much, Richard. Now then, Richard, welcome back. Thank you. Tell us more about yourself. Well, over the last few years, found a love for going to theatre, going to see bands, concerts. Uh, anywhere we can go in the country, we'll go and see them. I was going to say, where do you tend to go? I mean, where locally do you go? Because we live in Colchester, London's very convenient. It's actually not bad, yeah. We've been Leeds, all over the place. That's fantastic. What's been the best gig you've seen? Uh, went and saw the National last year. Great. Fantastic. Absolutely great. Very good. OK, now, Richard, you're on 54. We're looking for a target of 27 or less. What are you going to yeah. go for? My first two preferred answers have gone, so I'll go for the second one and say Hazel. You're going to go for Hazel for the Catkins. Let's see how many of our 100 said Hazel. There's your red line. Hazel's right. Um, 58 takes your total up to 112. Uh, again, lots of scores, and the, uh, the, the name hazel comes from the colour of the hazelnuts that work there. The, the colour hazel comes mm. from hazel nuts, not from the tree. There we are. Thank you very much indeed. Brian. Yes. Now then, Brian, yes. welcome to Point. It's great to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Thank you, Xander. Um, I'm originally from Ireland, but I now live in Plymouth with young Ashley here. And I sort of am still. I'm a performer slash singer type person. And um, I was once lucky enough to play the Phantom in the Phantom of the Opera in London's West End. Were you? Many years ago, I understudied the role. And you suddenly came on? I did. I got on a few times. I got on seven shows in a row because the actor 
had the swine flu wow. that I had nothing to do with. And um, <laughs> I went on for a week. You went on. I mean, that's quite something, because as the understudy, basically, I mean, you kind of always hope you get your chance. Yes. But equally, you know, oh, it, yeah. it hits you like a bus, I should think. When well, the worst thing is the gremlins get in your brain and yes. they start saying, well, you don't know the words for this song and um, you're going to be the one who spoils it for everyone. <sighs> and, that's, and you're kind of like, no, get out, gremlins. So it's, no. uh, yeah, it's quite nerve wracking. Wow. Um, now, Brian, what are you going to go for? 41 or less is your target. You could talk us through all of those yes. trees. The first one's really annoying me because I think it's the... Oh, it's that park, isn't it? I know that's holly, it's the third one. Then it's the apple tree. The sycamore, this hybrid is a common tree, the UK capital. A London pride, maybe? No. I'm going to go for apple tree. Apple tree. OK, Isaac Newton, there we are. Let's see how many of our 100 said apple tree. Here's your red line. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That takes your total up to 135, scoring you 65, as it does. Yeah, unlucky, Brian. There's a couple there that would have seen you through, so let's go through all of these, shall we? The um, General Sherman, do you know that one? Well, it's not going to be General Sherman, obviously, but... Oh, yeah, um, it's the same initials. Yeah, I know. How funny. Giant Sycamore? Giant, sequoia? oh, giant se sequoia. Yes, sequoia is what Giant it is. sequoia is the exactly answer. Yeah, what it is. giant sequoia would have scored you eight points. Um, you're quite right, it is Holly. And Holly would have scored you 72. And you know, this one is the, the best answer on the board London Plain. London Plain. London Pride's a beer. <laughs> London Plain's a tree. Four points if you said London Plain. Very well done. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So we are at the end of our first round, which means we have to say goodbye to our first pair. And I'm so sorry, Brian and Ashley, it is you. You even brought the first syllable of a tree's name in your, in your name. <laughs> um, and I'm afraid that hasn't helped at all. Uh, we say goodbye to you, but we'll see you again next time. Look forward to it very Thank much you. indeed. Thank you so much, Brian and Ashley. But for the remaining three pairs, it is now time for round two. There we are, very well done, everybody. We're down to three pairs now, very much into the teeth of the game. Particular congratulations to you, Jude. You are our lowest individual scorer. In fact, Jude and Casey are lowest combined scorers. Anyway, uh, best of luck to all three pairs. Uh, our category for round two this afternoon is... UK album charts. Can you all decide on your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many male solo artists who've had a UK number one album since 1960 as they could. Richard? Yeah, simply that. Anyone according to the official charts company from uh, the 1st of January 1960 to the 1st of August 2020, any male solo artist has had a UK number one album. Good luck. There we go. So, yes, Richard? Um, I will go with Sil. Seal. Let's find out how many of our 100 people said seal. Seal's right. That is a pointless answer. Very well done indeed, Richard. That adds £250 to our jackpot, takes the bump to £7,250. It scores you nothing, earns you our undying respect. And I hope sets, uh, sets a course that everyone else can now follow for the rest of the round. Uh, two number one albums for Seal. One of them was called Seal, and the other one was called Seal 2. <laughs> Clever. Yeah. Nice. Thank you very much, Richard. Casey. Um, I'm going to go for Michael Kiwanuka. Michael Kiwanuka, says Casey. Michael Kiwanuka. Let's find out if that's a correct answer. Let's see where it ends up. Michael Kiwanuka is right. Down it goes. It's another point as answer. Very well done indeed. That adds £250 to today's jackpot. Takes the total up to £7,500. Scores you nothing, earns you huge respect and puts colossal pressure on Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> Does, doesn't it? Just what a round so far. Well played. Uh, funny enough, it's Love and Hate that was the number one album. Kiwanuka, which won the Mercury uh, Prize, only got to number two. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Jenny. I'm going to have to take a risk, I yeah. guess. Um, I am going to go for Will Young. OK, Will Young, says Jenny. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Will Young. 
Will Young is right. Four. Four for Will Young. Uh, yeah, four points and four number one albums as well for, for Will Young. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. That brings us to the halfway point of the round and it means we look at our scores. Nothing and nothing. So there we are, Richard and Kate and Casey and Jude on nothing. Jenny and Will are on four. You're not way ahead, but Will, yes, good luck with finding a nice low score. Try and see if you can keep yourselves in the game. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? Now then, Will. Um, think of the other... Other teams have got zero at the minute. Probably need to take a bit of a punt. Um, definitely an artist. Not sure if he's had a number one album, but I'm going to go for Tom O'Dell. Tom O'Dell says, Will, let's see. No red line for you as you're currently the high scorers. Let's see how many of our 100 said Tom O'Dell. It's right. That's another pointless answer. Very well done indeed, Will. That adds another £250 to today's jackpot. Takes the total up to 7750 which is just as well, because it was looking a little bit weedy. Yeah, um, scores you nothing, leaves your total at four. There we are. This is fun. It's really well done. Quite often, these chart rounds go very, very badly, and uh, we cannot accuse this round of, uh, of going badly. When four is your top score, yeah, his first album, Long Way Home, was number one in 2013, Tom O'Dell. Thank you very much, Richard. And now, Jude. <sighs> I'm feeling nervous now. Uh, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to say Drake. Drake, says Jude. Uh, here is your red line. Please don't. Drake is right. Oh, down he goes to six. <laughs> six for Drake. Three number one albums for Drake. See, normally that would be the the best scorer in a, in a round like this, but um, interesting now on podium one. Mm. Mm. Interesting, interesting. Kate, there we are. What are you going to go for? OK, um, I'm going to say David Gray. David Gray, says Kate. OK, here is your red line. Let's see if we can get below that with David Gray. David Gray is right. Oh, it goes to one. <laughs> Very well done for getting through. One. Takes a total to one. Wow, well played, everyone. That's terrific. Three number one albums for David Gray. His first one, uh, White Ladder, which contained Babylon, which is perhaps his most famous song. Took over a year to get to number one. It's uh, wow. one of the best-selling albums in UK history. Loads and loads of pointless answers here. Well done if you said any of these. Dave uh, with Psychodrama, Jake Bug, Jay-Z is a pointless answer. You could have said Meatloaf, Mike Oldfield, Neil Young. Rag and Bone Man, there's Seal, Terence Trent Darby as well. Loads and loads of other pointless answers. You could have Brian Ferry, Chris Rea, Glenn Campbell, Jay Huss, Jack White, Kendrick Lamar, Mark Ronson, uh, Niall Horan, Paolo Nettini, Post Malone. Uh, loads and loads of pointless answers there. Very well done if you've got any of those at home. The biggest scorers, Cliff Richard, Elvis Presley, Ed Sheeran, Elton John, George Michael, Robbie Williams. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And that brings us to the end of our second round. Jude and Casey, I've just spotted. You are our high scorers. Very much against the grain of play, if you ask me. Um, but it's great, we get to see you again. So you'll have one more crack at uh, that pointless trophy. Thank you so much for playing Jude and Casey. But for our two remaining pairs, it is now time for the head-to-head. Congratulations, Jenny and Will, Kate and Richard. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £7,750. <laughs> but before we play the head-to-head, let's see if we can't boost that jackpot even more by finding some pointless answers. Here's how it's going to work. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Barbara Hepworth sculptures as they could. Richard. Yep, you know how it goes. Uh, find the pointless answers, avoid the ones we made up. There we go. There'll be six on the board. You've just got to find the pointless Barbara Hepworth sculptures, and here's the list. We have got another place. Ball, plane and hole, contrapuntal forms, meridian, winged figure, woman in love. 
Jenny and Will, you go first. Feel free to do any thinking you want to do out loud because it's in everyone's interests to, yeah, uh, so to find these pointless I answers. don't know much about Barbara Hepworth, do you? Neither, no. <laughs> um, so, unless you guys have an no, intelligent I guess, no. I think it's just probably a stab in the dark. Yeah. What do you want to go for? Top one. Yeah, we'll go for another place. Another place. OK, should we find out if another place is a Barbara Hepworth sculpture? Oh, no. Bad luck. Not a Barbara Hepworth sculpture. Well, that's taken one of the wrong answers off the board. <laughs> Kate and Richard, what are you going to go for? Over to you. I'll let you... Um... Shall we try contrapuntal forms <laughs> for no reason? Contrapuntal forms. No reason is as good a reason as any. <laughs> Let's see, how many of our 100 said contrapuntal forms? Is it a Barbara Hepworth sculpture? It's definitely a Barbara Hepworth sculpture. Is it going to go all the way down to zero? Let's find out. Oh, it does! Very well done indeed. Fantastic. Very nicely done, yeah. It was, uh, it was featured at the Festival of Britain and it's now in Harlow in Essex, contrapuntal forms. Um, now, let's take a look, shall we, at the rest of these. Winged Figure is the uh, Barbara Hepworth sculpture. It's at the, the John Lewis store on Oxford yeah. Street, and that would have scored you four points. Um, Meridian also would have scored you points, would have scored you two. And of these other two, Ball, Plane and Hole and Woman in Love, one of them is pointless, one of them is incorrect. I'm going to say reckon? Ball, Plane and Hole is pointless. Uh, and why do you think Woman in Love might not be? Because that is a Barbara Streisand song. Oh, he's only gone and there done it. Are. Absolutely right. Woman in Love, Barbara Streisand. That was incorrect. And Ball, Plane and Hole is the pointless answer. So Ball, Plane and Hole and Contrapuntal Forms. I've never said that before. <laughs> very well done if you've got both of those at home. Thank you very much indeed. Um, very well done. You managed to find one pointless answer. And actually, that takes our jackpot up to a lovely round £8,000. There we are. But who will be playing for it? Let's find out in the head-to-head. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. You are now allowed to confer before you give your answers. Very best of luck to both pairs. Our first question this afternoon is all about... Spa Towns. Richard. Yeah, five pictures now of Spa Towns from across the UK with their initials as well, but what are these towns, please? OK, can you identify these Spa Towns? Five of them. A. S. B. R L S C S D H and E M B There we are. Now then, Jenny and Will, you're our golden couple, so you get to go first. Yeah. I think between us, we probably only know one. Okay. Jenny's possibly just got D. Should we go for that? We'll go for Harrogate for D. D, Harrogate. Now then, Kate and Richard, the board's all yours. Do I know you know? B for definite. Yeah, I know B. Let's go B, I think, shall we? Yeah. Royal Leamington Spa. Royal Leamington Spa, say Kate and Richard. So we have Harrogate versus Leamington Spa. Uh, Jenny and Will went for Harrogate. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that for D. It is Harrogate. 39 for Harrogate. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kate and Richard have gone for Royal Leamington Spa for B. Let's see how many of our 100 people spotted that. It is Leamington Spa. And that goes down to 49. And that means Jenny and Will, well done. After one question, you're up 1-0. Uh, let's take a look at the rest of these, shall we? All of these pictures are of the various spas or spa rooms or pump rooms. Um, a? Scarborough. Scarborough. Absolutely. Scarborough would have scored you 14 points. Do you know C? It's in Rossier in Scotland. And it's Strath I, I, Heifer. Very well done if you said that. Would have scored you one point. And the final one, E? This is the Museum and Pump House, the Grand Pavilion, in Matlock, Bath. Ah. Very well done if you Derbyshire, said that. 11 yeah. points in Derbyshire, yeah. Lovely. Uh, thank you very much indeed. OK, now, here comes your second question. 
Kate and Richard, you get to go first, but you have to win this one. Stay in the game. It's the very best of luck. Our second question is all about 19th century noughties. Richard. Yeah, five clues now to people who were born in the noughties of the 19th century. Uh, we'll show you their initials as well, but who are they, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our board of five people, and here they are. We've got Danish author of fairy tales, including The Ugly Duckling and Thumbelina, H.C.A. Inventor of the writing system used by blind people, L.B. Romantic poet who wrote the sonnet How Do I Love Thee, E.B.B. British scientist who conceived the theory of natural selection, C.D. And English poet who wrote The Charge of the Light Brigade, A.L.T. There we are. Now then, Kate and Richard will go first. Feel free to confer. The fourth one. Do you know it? Like a pump. OK, we'll try the bottom one, um, Alfred Lord Tennyson. Alfred Lord Tennyson, say Kate and Richard for the bottom one. Now then, Jenny and Will, do you want to talk us through the rest of that board? Yeah, um, top one is Hans Christian Andersen. Second one is something Braille, but I don't think we know the first name unless we had a stab at it. Um, don't know EBB. CDs, obviously, Charles Darwin. No, Braille. Lewis Braille. Yeah. OK, we're going to go for LB. Um, Jenny thinks it could be Lewis Braille. Lewis Braille. OK, Lewis Braille or Louis Braille. OK, so we have got Alfred Lord Tennyson versus Louis Braille. Um, now then, Kate and Richard went for Alfred Lord Tennyson for the bottom, the Charge of the Light Brigade, the poet. Let's see how many of our 100 got that. Right, a good answer. Down it goes to nine. Alfred Lord Tennyson, well done. Meanwhile, Jenny and Will have gone for Louis Braille, the inventor of the writing system used by blind people. Let's see how many of our 100 people got Louis Braille. Louis Braille is right. And that goes down to 30. Very well done, but it means, Kate and Richard, well done. After two questions, you're back in the game. It's one all. Very nicely done. There is one answer that would have uh, pipped you, which we will get to. Charles Darwin is the biggest scorer up there. He would have scored you 53 points. Just beating Hans Christian Andersen, who would have scored you 52. Um, uh, but this answer would have beaten Alfred Lord Tennyson. Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Elizabeth Barrett Browning would have scored seven points. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now, here comes your third question. Best of luck to both pairs, because whoever wins this one goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot of £8,000. OK, here it comes. It is all about... Bones of the Human Body. Richard. We're going to show you the names now of five Bones of the Human Body, but we've rearranged all their letters into alphabetical order. Can you unscramble these alphabetical anagrams? Good luck, both teams. Thank you very much indeed. Here come the anagrams. I will read them out in my inimitable way. Adirsu, Akhelnsu, Aklpsu, Apifilu, and Abit. Now then, Jenny and Will, you will go first, but uh, feel free to confer. Yeah, OK. Um, I think we know three or four of them. You think, what's, what do you think? Scapula for the third one. OK, scapula for the third one, say Jenny and Will. Now, Kate and Richard, the rest are all yours. Talk us through them. So, top one's radius. Oh, do you know the second one? No. Fourth one's fibula and tibia. Top one. Yeah. You OK, we'll go for the top one. You're radius. going to go for radius for the top one. So we have scapula versus radius. Um, Jenny and Will went for scapula. Let's see how many of our 100 people got that. Scapula is right. That goes down to 22. Not bad. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kate and Richard have gone for radius for the top one. Let's see how many of our 100 got radius. Radius is right. Now, 22 has to beat, and it does. Look at that. Down it goes to 14. Very well done indeed, Kate and Richard, because that means after three questions, you are through to the final 2-1. What a head-to-head. -head. It's a big jackpot as well, up for grabs, so very, very well played. Let's fill in the uh, the two obvious ones down the bottom there. Fibula would have scored you 58, and Tibia uh, even more, 74. Uh, do you know this one? No. It's the heel bone. It's the calcaneus. 
And it's a pointless answer, so very well done Great if you say calcaneus. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. Jenny and Will, it is you. It's been great to have you on. You get one more crack, yep. I think, at the pointless final. We'll see you next time. Look forward to it. But meantime, thank, thank you. you very much indeed, Jenny and Will. <laughs> right, for Kate and Richard, it is now time for the pointless final. Congratulations, Kate and Richard. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. Now, though, you have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £8,000. <laughs> there we are. Now, what is going to be the subject that's going to help you win that? Anything you'd like to nominate? Kate? I don't know, some sort of sport, maybe? Cricket, snooker? Geography. Geography. OK, well, listen, you get to choose the category from the four we put up on the board. Let's see what is there. Good luck. The 2020 Tour de France, Judy Garland, rare breeds of poultry and TV drama in the 2010s. What are we thinking? <laughs> TV dramas? Yeah. I think we might have to, mightn't we? Yeah. TV dramas. TV dramas. TV dramas in the 2010s. £8,000 up for grabs. Listen, very, very best of luck. We're looking for anyone who, according to IMDb, was credited with appearing in two or more episodes of one of the following, please. Um, the brilliant Dr Foster. Parades End. Or The Missing. Some great TV shows there. Any actor who appeared in two or more episodes could get us a pointless answer. £8,000 up for grabs. Very, very best of luck from, uh, from us all. OK, thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers to win that jackpot of £8,000. All you need to do is find one pointless answer. Are you ready? As if we're ever going to be. OK, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. I haven't got a clue. OK. I've not seen any of them. Well, I mean, Dr Foster is that one with Saran Jones. Yeah. But I can't think who else was actually in it. Um, so if you can name any other sort of... British actors. <laughs> um, Parade's End and the Missing, I haven't seen. seen. This is going to be some guesses, isn't it? This is going to be some guesses, yes. Um, British actors, who would have been looking up? Anyone come to mind? <sighs> oh no. I mean, unless we try Olivia Colman, I don't know if she's going to be pointless anyway, or if, if we guess it's something of the others. No. We're going to have to stab in the dark. That, I'm afraid, is your time up. I'm so sorry. Let's have three answers. I'm to you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. So, Saran Jones? It's yeah, going to have to be. I know it's not pointless. Okay, say. Saran Jones. Yeah, for the first one. Um, David Tennant pop up in it at all? Maybe, but put him in something else. Because we'd guess. So David Tennant for the missing. OK, David Tennant. Try another Doctor Who, Christopher Eccleston. <laughs> Here's one. Christopher Eccleston in the praise end. <laughs> OK, and Christopher Eccleston. Of those three, do you want to put one at the end yeah. as a... No. OK, let's put Christopher Eccleston <laughs> anyway. last, shall we? Yeah. Yep, yep. Just, um, and let's put Saran first yeah. and David yeah. Tennant in the middle. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Saran Jones, we've got David Tennant, and we've got Christopher Eccleston. Well, who knows? What would your plans be for £8,000? Well, we're saving up a deposit to buy a house, aren't we? Uh, maybe a holiday? It'd be nice to go to visit family in Australia. Yeah. That would be nice. OK, well, let's see. <laughs> let's just see. It's been a tough category for you, this one. Um, Saran Jones is your first answer. We've got the Dr Foster cast members. And uh, Saran Jones, if she is pointless, will win you £8,000. How many people said Saran Jones? Saran Jones is right. She just has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot of £8,000. Down we go with Saran Jones. Through the 20s to 22. 22 for Saran Jones. Let's turn to David Tennant, your next answer. I'm afraid this is a bit of a stab in the dark. 
We're looking for actors in two or more episodes of The Missing. Let's find out, is David Tennant in that? For £8,000, could it be pointless? Sorry. <laughs> Let's turn to your third and final answer, Christopher Eccleston. We're now into Parade's End. Any actor who's appeared in two or more episodes of Parade's End. Let's find out if Christopher Eccleston was in that. Let's see if he's pointless for £8,000. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's always really tough, and it's all the harder when there's a jackpot like that at stake. So I'm, I'm really sorry to say you didn't manage to find the all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot. Um, but putting that to one side, you have been fabulous. You performed you. incredibly well <laughs> right the way across the show, um, and you get to take home a pointless trophy each in recognition of that, so remember that. Brilliant. Yeah, it's tricky, that, isn't it? There's some big shows there, and obviously if you've seen them, then they're easy, and if you haven't seen them, then they're enormously difficult, uh, I would say. Let's start, shall we, with Dr Foster. It's a, a huge hit. He, he, all of these are pointless answers. Uh, Adam James, uh, more recently in I May Destroy You, as a pointless answer. Cheryl Campbell, Naveen Chowdhury, as a pointless answer. Victoria Hamilton, who also played uh, the Queen Mother in the first couple of seasons of The Crown, Victoria Hamilton. Loads of other pointless answers as well. Emily Lloyd Saney is a pointless answer. Martha Howe Douglas, who stars in and writes um, Ghosts. Uh, Robert Pugh, a pointless answer. Sarah Stewart as well. Uh, the only ones that scored points at all were Saran Jones. Jodie Comer is in it as well. She would have scored you points. Bertie Carvel and uh, Tom Taylor. Everyone else would have been a pointless answer for Dr Foster for two or more episodes. Now, I didn't see Parade's End, but it's got an extraordinary cast. Here's some pointless answers, firstly. Anne-Marie Duff is in it. Miranda Richardson, two Oscar nominations for Miranda Richardson. Reaper Everett, the brilliant Stephen Graham, all of them uh, in it. Uh, Dennis Lawson is a pointless answer in that. Janet McTeer is a pointless answer. Lucy Bryars. Rufus Sewell is a pointless answer. Ronald Pickup. Uh, Ned Dennehy, Sylvester Latuzel. Uh, that sounds like an amazing cast. Doesn't it? And the people who score points as well make it sound even better. Benedict Cumberbatch, Rebecca Hall, and Adelaide Clements and Roger Allen. Funnily enough, Roger Allen is a pointless answer for the next one for The Missing. So he scored points for that one, but a pointless answer for The Missing. Uh, Francis O'Connor, also a pointless answer. Jason Fleming, who's in Lockstock, all sorts of things. Uh, Checky Cario, who plays Baptiste in that. There's a spin-off series, Baptiste, uh, which obviously also stars in. Everybody there, pointless, apart from James Nesbitt, David Morrissey, Keely Hawes, and Laura Fraser. Very well done if you watch those shows. Very well done if you've got pointless answers on any of those. Thank you very much indeed, Richard, and thank you, Caden Richard. I'm sorry you didn't win our jackpot today. That'll therefore roll over onto the next show when we'll be playing for £9,000. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>